Welcome. Welcome to this, the worship recording, for February 28th, 2021, the second Sunday in this year's season of Lent. And now as we transition from these cold and snowy days of February into these changeable weeks of the month of March, perhaps it will come in as a lamb this year. Most definitely, March will leave us as a lion, the lion of Judah, who prepares the way of salvation through the message and passion on the cross. Thank you for joining us this day as we seek to worship God. again to this service of worship on this second Sunday in the season of Lent. We pause in our Lenten journey to follow our Lord as he makes ready a plan for our salvation. Fantastic to think about how God had it figured out even before we ever knew there was a problem. Please join me in the call to worship found printed on the screen. Jesus said, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for the sake of the gospel will save it. But how shall we take up our crosses and follow? As we gather in this time of worship and take pause during our Lenten journey of faith, let us seek the guidance and wisdom of God so that we may discern the crosses in our lives 
and follow in the will of God. And let us pray. O holy and mighty God, you are our great creator and sustainer. Beyond all that is, your being is beyond our comprehension. Yet you have said that we are made in your image, made for a relationship with you. This truth and blessing we can only receive through faith. And so by your gift of faith to us, we worship you this day for who you are in all your mystery and for the revelation of yourself that we find in Jesus our Lord, through whom and by whom we draw near to you even now. For we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And grace to you and peace from God, who has redeemed us through the saving grace found in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us sing our opening songs of praise.
introduction for our prayer of confession. This past week during our winter meeting of the classes of Greater Palisades, Pastor Rob Miller of Old Paramus Reformed Church gave this meditation in that normally he looks forward to the season of Lent. It's a time of pause in our busy schedules. It's a time of emptying, of letting go, of appreciating a time of stillness. Except for this year. This year has been totally different. It seems as though we have paused since last March. Because of the pandemic, perhaps this whole year has been a season of Lent. And Rob is now ready, as I am as well, to celebrate and rejoice. And yet, in that conflict of emotions and feelings, we can know that even so, we still have the opportunity, this special time, where right before Easter, we can take a different look at ourselves and therefore discover perhaps something that God is willing to show us that we were unable or just happened to not see through the rest of this Lenten pandemic, so to speak. With that in mind, then, let us join together in the prayer that's found printed on the screen as we seek God's grace even during this time of Lent. And let us pray. Almighty God, we so often try relying on ourselves instead of you in times of trouble. But you are the true source of our strength. Our deepest longing is to follow you, and yet we fail to live as you command. We want to bring our whole selves, our whole hearts to you, but we do not. You ask us to deny ourselves and follow you, but we become afraid. You ask us to share the good news of the gospel, but we do not want to take the risk. You ask us to put your concerns above our worldly desires, but we cannot seem to take that leap of faith. Forgive us for all those times when we fall short in doubt. Help us to stand before you with our whole selves, trusting that it is you who makes us whole. Amen. And amen. And let us take this opportunity to come before God with our personal prayers and let us pray. And hear now these words of assurance. Jesus has bridged the gap between our unholiness and the holiness of God. Christ's victory over sin and death is complete. And in him we are counted as righteous in the sight of God. Having made our confession, we are able to approach the throne of grace with confidence. And there to claim by faith the freedom that is ours in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. Friends, believe this good news, and let us go forth to live in peace. And may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, live in our hearts and our minds as we worship this day. May the peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Let us take this opportunity to share the peace of Christ with one another with those with whom we are gathered, or perhaps with those we may be able to reach out to at this time. comes to us from Psalm 22, verses 23 through 31, a psalm of David. Perhaps we are better familiar with verse 1, however. 
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For these are the words that Jesus uttered while hanging upon the cross. But lest we be left without them, Justin will bring them to musical life with our music ministry this day, written by his mentor, Didi Iango, Eli Eli, which is the Aramaic, Eli Eli, Lama Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Even so, here to lead us responsibly in Psalm 22 is Nancy Fitzgerald. Psalm 22, a Psalm of David, plea for deliverance from suffering and hostility. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. And, and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone once again, and if you are a first-time visitor, an extra special welcome. As for now, I would ask that you please join me in prayer as we prepare to open God's word for today, and let us pray. Gracious God, we come before you once again, getting ready to hear your words of life found printed in the words of Scripture. Please bless our reading so that it may instruct us in the way that we should go and fulfill your will in our lives. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Our first passage of Scripture comes to us from Luke chapter 13. And well, it's kind of a process passage where Jesus is, all, is on his way to Jerusalem, as we know from chapter 9, a week or so ago. But here, his, here are some vignettes that he meets with along the way. Please join me on the screen. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to his gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Now, moving to verse 31. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and yet you are not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Moving now to our passage from Romans. Romans being Paul's introductory letter to the church there in Rome. While he was planning to go further west, we think, into Spain. Circumstances changed and Paul did get to Rome, except it was under house arrest and armed guard. Nevertheless, here are these verses from chapter 5. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when, when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgressions of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, 
So one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. But law came in with the result that the trespass, trespass multiplied. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that just as sin exercised dominion in death, so grace might also exercise dominion through justification, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And this is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Well, hello everyone. How are we doing today? It's good to see you and some new friends as well. Welcome. Well, look what Lena's mom brought us this past week. They're stickers for the wall, and here's what they say. Wash your hands and say your prayers, because Jesus and germs are everywhere. Oh my. So we're going to put those right near the sink, in the bathroom, so that we make sure we wash our hands, because germs are everywhere, but luckily Jesus is too. Now. Just believing in Jesus doesn't get rid of the germs on our hands. You need soap and water to accomplish that. And it's still 20 seconds as we sing the song, Jesus Loves Me, at least the first part of it. And also, too, it's like what we read in the Bible today. That where in Paul was writing to the church in Rome, where sin came into the world, you know, we all fall short. We all grow up, and well, we're, none of us are perfect. It's like germs are everywhere. But we're very lucky because Jesus came into this world, and Jesus gave himself, gave himself as a payment for our sin. It was pretty icky the way he did it, but yet he did it anyway. And so now the love and grace of Jesus is everywhere, too. So when you look at these signs as we wash, well, you know what? Wash your paws and say your prayers because Jesus and germs are everywhere. Luckily, Jesus, even though sin is everywhere, Jesus is there even more better than ever. Let's think about that and let's pray. Oh, gracious God, thank you. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Because not only are, is sin and germs everywhere, but faith in you and faith in Jesus has eliminated the power of sin. And also, too, thank you for soap and water so that we can get past those pesky germs as well. For we ask in Jesus' name, this day and always, amen. Amen.
Patrick Swayze, Paul Newman, Peter Jennings, Farrah Fawcett, Ted Kennedy, Michael Crichton, Sidney Pollack, Steve Jobs, Anne Bancroft, William Rehnquist, and last of all, Gilligan, Bob Denver. What do these recognizable names, actors, and personalities, including Alex Trebek most recently, have in common? They all died of cancer, and more than a few too soon. Fortunately, over the years, great strides have been made in cancer research, but there still is a long way to go, and for the many sufferers, fortunately, of this awful and pervasive disease, they've been able to go into remission, or better yet, some have become cancer-free. Nevertheless, while lifestyle choices and environment can play a contributory role, oftentimes cancer just happens. And just as we have dreadfully learned over this past year with the COVID-19 pandemic, these diseases do not discriminate between rich and poor, famous or not. Not one of us can guarantee that we will get through life unscathed by one malady or another, particularly on the basis of our own inherent abilities. Certainly some folks of better means may have a bit of an edge for access to treatment and prevention. Nevertheless, and ultimately, no one is immune on the basis of their own ability and no one can escape no matter how hard they may attempt to do so. We are all in the same boat, so to speak. The Bible says we are supposed to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. These are the two greatest commandments. Yet also nobody can fully achieve this goal on their own merits as well, no matter how good or how hard they try. Yet the unique message of Christianity is that we get there, meaning we are accepted by God as righteous, as though we have fulfilled these two commandments, not because of our own effort, nor our own good works. We get there because we have put our trust in Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. This is reflected in our narrative lectionary passage in Luke for today, in that Jesus is talking about how everyone is in the same boat, so to speak. No one is more special or worse off than another when it comes to seeking forgiveness through repentance. All of us need to repent equally whether or not a tower fell on top of you, as Jesus comments, or a Galilean whom Pilate had some of their blood mingled with their sacrifice, or in current day terms, whether a tragedy occurs, like most recently the car accident involving Tiger Woods, one of the best golfers ever, can still end up seriously injured as easily as anyone else. Jesus is trying to make the point that bad stuff happens to everyone without discrimination. True, bad stuff happens more readily to those who make poor choices. Nevertheless, bad stuff happens even to those who make good choices as well. This has been true throughout recorded history. And because of this, it would behoove all of us to think about repentance and our inability to save ourselves through our own efforts. That is why we are saved by faith, as Paul talks about in our passage from Romans, where Paul reviews the salvation history from Adam to Moses, but then again, it resets itself in a way when Jesus comes on the scene. 
with grace and forgiveness. It's though from Adam it crescendos out, and before it overtakes all the world permanently, Jesus is inserted into time and place, and thus grace also then emanates from Jesus and counteracts and nullifies the effects of our sin. Here, here's verse 18. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's acts of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. And in verse 21, just that as sin exercised dominion and death, so grace might also exercise dominion through justification leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In a, set, in a sense, it's even more than a net zero sum where the gift of Christ not only nullifies the effects of sin, but then goes on to grant us eternal life as well. Now, in the second part of our gospel text, Jesus is being warned by a group of Pharisees to watch out for that wily King Herod who wants to kill him. But as Audrey West, our commentator for today, observes, Jesus is not on a journey to Jerusalem to get away from it all and to run and hide, but rather Jesus is on a journey to Jerusalem to get into it all, and specifically into the midst of Jerusalem and into the heart of the people of God. Even so, Jesus laments over Jerusalem. Long have I desired to gather you, but you are not willing. Jesus speaks of his desire and of the Jerusalemites' opposing will. But in Greek, they're from the same root word, thalo. Thus, in a sense, to speak of God's will is the same as to speak of God's desire, thalo. They're both the same. And then we must not forget, too, that often as the people of God, we will not always desire the same thing that God does or that God wills. But thanks be to God, God has figured out a way to make it all work out in the end. Once again, the unique message of Christianity is that we get there not because of our own effort nor because of our own good works. We get there because we put our trust in what Jesus did for us on the cross. Like the image of a mother's hen protecting us, even so, Jesus is not the Savior that we would typically imagine. Better yet, Jesus is the Savior that we need. Good and bad happens to us all. It is Jesus in our lives is what makes all the difference. Thus, in a way, this journey of Lent can help us prepare to receive God's gift of God's very own self. May we be fruitful as a fig tree planted in God's garden, one that has been fertilized with the word of God and the grace of God, so that we may bear fruit and thus be able to extend God's grace to others. This too, as we prepare the way in our hearts to say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And let us pray. O oh, gracious God, we worship this day in humble obedience, giving thanks for your working in a new way in our lives. Through your sacrificial love on our behalf, we now have access back to you so that we may enjoy your presence forever. Help us respond in gratitude and service as we ask that through the power and love of the Holy Spirit, you continue to teach us and instruct us 
and be with us, not only as we gather together as a family of faith, but also as we seek your will and guidance throughout the week. For it is in the name of Jesus in which we ask and pray. Amen. And amen. And now as we begin to respond to God's love, let us do so by affirming our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. So if you please join me on the screen, let us confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we enter into a time of offering, as we say each and every week, make sure you're okay. These are tough times. I certainly hope we shall emerge from them soon, just in time, well, to experience the new life of Easter, perhaps. It might take a little longer. In any event, as God has blessed you and you are able to donate, thank you. We greatly appreciate it. If you can send in a donation, you can do so by email or online, uh, through the regular mail, or stop by socially distantly and drop one off. In any event, we are thankful for all the gifts that help this ministry continue. So please, in thanksgiving, let us pray together and let us pray. Oh, gracious God, you are the greatest gift. And our gifts that we give, we give in response to that which you have already accomplished for us. Thank you, O Lord. Please help us to appreciate the gift and the giver so that we may rejoice with all those who benefit from the glories of your grace. Thank you, O gracious God. Help us as we continue on this Lenten journey towards the joy of Easter this day and always. For we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. And Amen. And let us sing our doxology together. Februarys in the last five years combined, who knows? Nevertheless, we, as we continue through the season of Lent, as we move into March, we have a corned beef supper that's a takeout meal this year, like it ended up being last year, on Saturday the 13th. Information is on the website, and if you'd like to reserve a meal, you can call the church office or, and find all the details that you need. Also, we're offering March soup this year as well. And those details also will be on the church website, as well as an opportunity to order Easter flowers, if you'd like to do so to dedicate and decorate the sanctuary for the glorious day of Easter. With that in mind, though, I'd ask that you would please join me in prayer and let us pray. O oh God of mercy, you are full of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in mercy, 
always ready to forgive. Grant us grace to renounce all evil and to cling to Christ, that in every way we may prove to be your loving children. For in lifting Jesus up on the cross, you open for us the path to eternal life. Grant that we, being born again of water and the Spirit, may joyfully serve you in the newness of life, to follow you with courage, be known by your name, and faithfully walk in your holy ways. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. O oh, dear Lord, as the vaccinations continue to roll out for those who would long to have one, may their longings be ended soon. May the distribution continue to go as well as it can. O oh, gracious God, thank you for our essential workers. Please strengthen them in their task. For hospital and EMS and doctors and nurses, please continue to strengthen them as well. For those who deliver people and deliver goods, may they continue in their worthy callings. O oh, gracious God, we are still in the tunnel. It looks like there's light at the end of it, but we are still in the tunnel. Help us to continue during this time of, well, of isolation, this time of separation, this time of quarantining, as we endeavor to keep each other safe and secure. Secure in the knowledge, of course, that our ultimate safety is well within your capable hands. O oh, gracious God, please bless those who are traveling. May they reach their destination safely and return home the same, to lift up their hearts with you. Bless those who are facing medical procedures. May they become scheduled and accomplish that for which they are designed. Be with those who are recovering. May it be swift and strong and well. Yet, Lord, there's those of us who are experiencing grief at this time. Please comfort us. Those of us who are in chronic pain, where there is no remedy readily available. And we ask for strength to, make, to meet each new day. Lord, please bless our students, our kids in school, in high school, in elementary, and in college. Help them to study well and to negotiate their education through this time of hybrid, remote, and, well, in-person learning. Lord, thank you for those who serve us in uniform. Keep them safe, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. In all these things, we are more than grateful as we turn to you using the words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And amen. And let us sing our closing hymn together.
go forward from this place of worship. May the God of grace go with us. And to Jesus, who now is preparing the way for our salvation, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, who has made Christ's love known to us even today. And now may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. again for joining us. And just as we are to wash our hands and say our prayers, luckily soap and water may combat the germs, but the grace and love of God and Jesus Christ is more than sufficient to combat the effects of sin in our life. Until next time, may God be with you. <laughs>